right, let's prepare ourselves. And uh, once again, I would like to ask everyone if you have time to take notes. And because I believe today is one of also the uh, uh, messages of God for us so that we will have a transformed life. Because we will be talking about, again, the changed life. Okay, so our type, our, our type, our, our type for today is about procrastinations. You know what? Procrastinations is the enemy of change. We, I've been talking about, what, I mean, three, three times already about the change, right? First one is that we, you know, in order for us to have a changed life, we first need to understand is God is working in you. God is putting that desire in your heart and giving you the ability, the power to do what God told you to do, right? Because that's the first step. Because until we don't realize and understand that God is working in us, right? That desire is giving you, okay? Like, for example, you desire to pray. You desire to reach out for people. You want to share the love that God put in your heart. You know what? Those things doesn't come from you. It comes from the Holy Spirit, right? The Bible says, right, that He is giving you the desire in your heart. So first things that we need to understand, these things come from from the Holy Spirit in leading us and guiding us so that we will have a changed life. That's number one. Number two is that, what is number two is that, you know, uh, we can't be the same person again, right? We, we, we need to change, right? That God wants us to put off our old staff and putting a new man by renewing our mind, right? And one thing, renewing your mind, what do, what do we understand? Renewing your mind, it means that you need to exchange your ideas, okay, uh, with, with God's idea. Your thoughts with God's thought. That should be an exchange, right? So that we will be able to walk to the path that God wants us to take, right? But the problem is that there was excuses last time, right? Remember that? We always result making excuses in our life. Okay? And that's why there's no change in our life. And today, another part is procrastination. Right? Which is the enemy of a changed life. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Right? So, um... All right, so we're going to start also on the same text, which I gave, which is on the uh, John chapter 5. Okay, if you know that, I know you're already familiar with this. And we've been talking about for so many times, right? And, 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 uh, and John chapter 5, verse 5 to 9, okay, he says, there's a certain man um, which had infirmities for 38 years. Remember that? Okay. So in, at this time, we're going to take another insight of this verse, right? The first one is that when I share about this one is that the, is God is giving that desire in the heart of this person, the layman, okay? And now we're going to, start, and then we're going to talk about today about, you know, uh, excuses, which turn into, which is the reason for procrastination. So let's read our Bible. On John chapter 5, verse 5 to 9. Okay, it says here, I'll be reading an NIV version. It says, Now a certain man was there who had infirmities for 38 years. Verse 6, When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? All right? Verse 7, The sick man answered, him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool. Okay, when the water is stirred up, but while I'm still coming, coming, another steps down before me. Verse 8, Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. And 9, verse 9, immediately the man who was made well took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath day. Okay, so remember, it's about how many years? 38 years, right? In infirmities, in that kind of situation. That's, that's a long time. Okay? And uh, Jesus saw him and he knew 
that he had been on that kind of situations. And, and, and he said to him, do you want to be made well? Okay, and what was the response of the man, the sick man? Sir, I have no, no one to put me in, into the pool, when the water stirred up. Now, there's one thing I want you to understand, to see on this account, okay? Uh, what happened when the Word of God shows up. I want you to see the difference of self-effort versus the grace of God. Okay? So, when, remember this person, he said, when Jesus asked him, do you want to get well? What was his response? Initial response, huh? spontaneous response was, what? Well, sir, uh, I, 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 I don't have anyone. Okay? Do you know why that person said that? That, you know, instead of, yes, Lord, yeah, I, I want to get well. Right? But he said, you know, uh, uh, I have no one to help me out. Okay? You know what? Because this person had been trying, I, I, uh, you know, um, the Bible didn't specifically says how many, since how long this person been going to that pool of Bethesda. He didn't say that, but Jesus said, the Bible says that it's been on that kind of situations of infirmity for 38 long years, right? But when he start going to the pool, we don't know. But I'm sure it could be since he had that infirmities, maybe a year or two, he started going to the pool of Bethesda, right? So I want, well, I want you, there's are two things I want you to see here. The first one, because the reason why he was, keeps, he said, instead of responding to Jesus, he said, you remember, uh, do you want to get well, right? But instead of saying yes, he said, no, I don't have anyone to help me out. Why? It's because he had been on that kind of situation for so many years. He get acquainted with it. He get you know, comfortable with it. Before he his encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, he's been trying, you know, he's been trying to be in that particular place on his own self-effort, right? He's trying to go there at every time. But the problem is that every time he will be on that kind of, on that particular pool, he failed, right? Because he's doing his own effort. He's, he's going there, all right? He's doing everything he can. But the problem is this, he failed. And that's been going on for so, so, so many years in his life. Right? He's been doing that. But when Jesus came, right? But when Jesus came, what happened? Jesus speak the words of life. Okay, so when, when, and now things are getting changed now. From doing his self effort and committing himself to be on that particular pool of Bethesda, right? Now, here comes the grace of God. Okay, Jesus show up, show up, okay, and he said, Do you want to get well? I want you to rise. Take up your bed and walk. Okay, so when the when Jesus speaks the words of life, it changed everything. All right, so and Jesus said, "Do you want to get well? All right, rise, take your bed, and walk." Okay, he is speaking the word of life, and you know what? The word of life. This is. And when, when, when he exposed to the word of God, you know what happened? There is what? God put the desires, the new desire in his heart. Before, when there was, you know, when he was doing his self-effort, he, he had this desire, right? He, he had this desire to be healed. But the problem is that he's coming from, he, from his self-effort. But this time, 
Jesus showed up, he came, and he said, and he speak the words of life to this lame man. Right? And you know what? When God speak, there's a divine enablement upon his life. Right? There's a divine, there's a, there's a different now because of the word of God. You know what the Bible says? When God wants to start working in your life, in Psalm 107, verse 20, it says, He sent His word and healed them and delivered them from their distractions. So this time, now the Psalm 107, verse 20 said, When God will want to work in your life, first He will do is He will send that word, that desire. Right? He will send His first His word in your life. And that's what happened to this particular man. And he said, he first time he hear the message of the Lord. That desire, that coming, you know, he, now he had now a, a new desire. A godly desire. A desire that comes from God. Okay? And, and what happened is that when he desired, when he speak the word, when Jesus speak the word, things change in his life. You know what I'm trying to say, church? That we need to be have to be more exposed to the word of God. So what happened? You see that the first one is that when, when he had been trying for how many years, right? Doing it coming from his self effort, and the problem is that it always failed. Now he had the word, and when the word show up, things change. Right? And the Bible says, do you want to get well? Okay? And what was his fun? I have no man, right? Why? Because he's been used on that kind of situations that he's been trying his own self-effort, his desire. Yeah, he had desire, but he, he can't make things change in his life because he's coming from his self-effort. You don't understand? Now he had the word when God Speak the word of life. Things start to change in his life. Right? So what my point here is that if you want to see change in your life, church, you need to be exposed to the very word of God. Because when you hear the word of God, there is a divine, divine enablement for us so that we will be able to do what God wants us to do, right? Okay, so remember that in, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, before God, God said, for God is working in you. He's starting working in you, and He's giving you that desire and the power and ability to do what He said. Are we getting it, church? Okay, so... So that's, that's the difference now. That's why he said, you know, I, I, I can't. Now what the Lord Jesus Christ said. He didn't pay attention to those kind of excuses. Because he's trying to make excuses based on his experience. Right? The previous experience. That no one is, you know, helping him to be on that pool. By the time he get to the pool, it, someone else get there first. Right? So now... It's, it's completely different. Okay, the Bible, Jesus said, rise and take up your bed and walk. Okay, so you know what? If there's one thing is going to be responsible for changing our life, it's when we take immediate actions to do the things that God revealed, uh, revealed to us to do. Okay, and, and, and there's, 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 uh, there are things that God make, uh, make known to you makes known to you and a week and a week goes by and we don't do it okay now I, I can't help to wonder that what if we have applied immediately uh, immediate action to the things God has spoken to you do you think that will be that will make a difference in our life when we take action immediately for the things that God has spoken to us, of the things that God has revealed unto us, okay? And you know what? When God revealed things to, for you, 
to do, okay? You immediately, you need to put actions to it immediately because there will be a spiritual breakthrough. All right? So, and, and what I'm hearing from the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, rise, take up your bed, and walk. Okay, so an ability, there, there's an ability, the, uh, the, there's an ability, the, the, the grace of God is available at that particular time. Healing is available when Jesus said, when he said, rise, take up your bed and walk. And during that time, do you think that when Jesus said the healed man can, was already standing? No. But when Jesus speak the word, rise, take up your bed and walk. You know what? The grace of God, the ability to be healed and be restored is already available at that time. The moment that Jesus speaks the word, rise. Take up your bed and walk. You know what? When Jesus speaks to us during your time of devotion, the time that you spend with God, the moment Jesus speaks his words, the anointing, the ability to be delivered, the ability to be restored, is already available to you. So what we need is we need to take an immediate action based on the word God has spoken to us. Are we getting it? Hello. And what happened when he heard... Jesus said, arise and walk. Take up your bed and walk. The moment that he hear that, he start picking up his bed and start walking. Why? And this time is different. Before, he tried to get to the, uh, uh, on the Bethesda pool, but it always failed, right? But this time, you know the difference? It's because of the spoken word of God upon his life. That he said when Jesus said, Arise, rise up, take up your bed and walk. Creating a church. That is a kind of spirit of breakthrough that we are all looking for and after. Right? Because when Jesus speaks, there's an enablement. Are we getting in church? Hallelujah. So what God said in, in, in Philippians 2.13 again, for God is working in you, giving you the desire. And that's what happened to that part, this particular person. When God speak, he, God put that desire in his heart to be well. Right? And then the Bible says, he, he gave you that desire and the power, the ability to do. What God said to you. Right? And that's what happened to this person. Church, what we need, if you want to have a spiritual breakthrough in your life, you've been trying just like a layman that we've been trying to get into that pool of Bethesda. But we keep somehow, we keep failing and get and and and, and, and you know it anchor us into that kind of situations in our life. We always fail. We always miss. Right? You know why? It's because of the absence of the word of God in your life, in our life. It is not that God didn't speak to us. God wants his desire to always speak to each one of us. But the problem is that we're not available. We're not available to listen to God. We're not available to make ourselves exposed to God. And that's why we never hear anything from anything from God. Are we getting it? Hallelujah. So as I said, you know, there are things that come in, you know, God makes known to you. And the weeks goes by, we don't do it. Okay? And and and, and and what God is telling us here is that, you know, God, Jesus said, 
I want you to do it right now. But the problem is that we keep procrastinating. We keep putting it off what God has spoken to us. Right? And you know what? This when Jesus said, Arise, take a bed, and walk. It demands what? Immediate action. Right now. That's what Jesus is telling that particular person, right? Right now. Not tomorrow, not a week after, but right now. You know what? When this person did not respond to what God has spoken to him, when Jesus said, rise up, if he didn't do it, even though the, the ability to, for him to be healed and be restored is available, if he take actions, if he didn't take any actions at all, he won't be healed. I mean, because when God speaks to us, it demands immediate actions. It is now. You do it right now. Not tomorrow. Not next year. Right? Why? Because the anointing is available at that particular time. I'm sure it's, it, it happens. I'm sure you already experienced it, right? When we are going through a kind of situation in our life, and we ask God, we seek God, Right? And God speak to us. And then what happened? When we submit ourselves to that word, when we trust our, trust the Lord um, to that word that God has spoken to us, and you do it, whatever God wants is telling you to do, then there will be a spiritual breakthrough. Just like what happened to this particular man, uh, layman, right? So do you understand what I'm trying to say? The reason why he, because when Jesus, you want to get well, he said, no one, uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, in other version of the Bible, he said, I can't do it. I, I don't want because no one is helping me out. Okay? It is because from his previous experience of failure. Because he's coming, he's doing it on his own self-effort. Are we getting it? And but this time is different. He has the word of God. And that changed everything in his life. Amen. Are you getting a church? So this person we're going to remain paralyzed and not nothing will happen until he did until he do something. He did something about it. Amen. So and Jesus said, take up your bed and walk. Okay? And as I said, Jesus is ready to heal. Heal him. The power is available. You know what? Faith, what is faith actually? Faith is taking possession, possessions of what grace has already made available. That's faith. Okay? Faith, take possessions of what grace has already made available to us. And in other words, it needs immediate actions. John, get used with the just listening the word of God or knowing the word of God and not doing it. That in the first place, why God has spoken to you that, that particular verse in your life is because God wants you to take actions so that you will be able to possess and, and, and receive what God has made available for you. Are we getting a church? Okay, so, so the question is now, is that are, are there something you haven't been able to do? Is there something that God has spoken to you, but you keep on putting it off for quite some time? Okay. I believe that's that's you know that's when something supernatural will begin in your life when you take actions to it. When you do your actions in the natural, right? As God directed you, God add his super ability to your natural ability. And then you will experience the supernatural result in your life. Are we getting a church? No, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about when the Holy Spirit has put something in your heart. 
He's trying to lead you, to guide you, and direct you. Then we do nothing at all. And, and sometimes it's just, you know, when God directed us to lead us, to guide us, sometimes it's just simple as forgiving someone. Right? Or someone as yeah, simple as giving a gift to someone. Or, or probably giving an offering to God. Or, so, or, or something as simple as, you know, uh, praising God we don't, when you don't feel like doing it. You see, I'm, I'm trying to say, or as, as simple as the Spirit of God leading you to do what you already know what to do. Because God already spoken to you in the past. And God is bringing it up and keep bringing it up to you so that you will have a spiritual breakthrough. Remember, anointing, the healing, restorations, it's already available when God speaks to you. But you need to, make, to take immediate actions to what God is telling you to do. Are we getting in church? All right. So, so maybe just like the, the, the lame man, right? When Jesus said, you know, um, do you want to get well? Right? And he said, what? He said, uh, no, oh, Lord, um, no one's want to, you know, the, no one, no man um, help me. Because of, you know, because of his previous experience, right? So you may not, you know, in that form that, you know, you may not believe things, uh, you may not believe that things could change in your life. Maybe because of our past failure experience natin, di ba? You know what? But God does. He believes in you. Right? That you can have a changed life. And, 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 he is, and that's the reason why He is leading you and guiding you and speaking to you and even inspiring you to do it because God believes in you. That you can do it. Open up in church. Right? Si Lord, may tiwala sa iyo eh. Pero tayo, wala tayong tiwala sa sarili natin. Maybe because of our past experience. We try to do things in our own self, effort, and we always fail. We work so hard, we, we, we take overtime and, and whatever. You know, we, we do a lot of things on our own self-worth. And then after that, we fail. Things not working the way we want it to be. But you know what? It is only one word from God. One word from God will change everything in our life. And if we take immediate actions to it, voila, there will be a spiritual breakthrough in your life. Are we getting it, church? So that's why the, the Lord is more interested because He wants to for you to have a prosperous life. That you will have a life to the full. To the fullness, right? Okay, so that when this particular man in John chapter 5, like right, he started making excuses. Right? And I said, I have no man to help me to, you know. What the, what the Lord said? Rise up. You know what the immediate response of the Lord is to, he speak the word again, he said, rise up. As if he is not interested on those excuses, right? He's not interested. So, are we getting it, church? Right? So, and the reason why he was giving, giving those exp ex uh, excuses because of his previous experience. He tried to do things, but it always failed. Right? So, <clears throat> right, so now, <clears throat> so the Lord Jesus Christ, when he speaks, rise up, is now giving you, Kim, a direction. A powerful word, it carries what? A divine enablement. Okay? That enable him to do what the Lord said, spoken to him. And what was that? To rise up. Take up your bed and, and walk. Okay? And so the same thing also. The Holy Spirit wants to lead you and to guide you and to give you directions. Okay? So, so how many of you are open to the directions, to the Holy Spirit directing your steps? 
How many of you? Right? And that's why the Lord is giving him directions to break out from the failure in life. That's why he speak the word of God. He speak the very word about the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, you know what? Our inability to change in life is, the solution, Jan, is to take immediate actions. That's it. You have everything you need for life. But if you don't do anything about what God has given you, you won't see it. Deliverance, healing, provision, name it. Are we getting it? So we need to learn to cooperate with God and allow Him to lead us, to guide us, and direct your life. Okay? Are we getting it, church? So, so the sure way to failure and, and in our inability to change is because of what? Of procrastinations. Kasi like, bakit walang napangi, na bagong pangyayari sa buhay natin and we keep failing? It's because we keep what? Making excuses, making procrastinations sa buhay po natin. And that's the reason why we, you know, but already available. God has already spoken to you. Are we getting a church? Uh, you know what? What's, what's, what, you know, how do we find procrastinations? Procrastinations means putting off immediate actions. Putting off, put off doing something that you know that you can do today for tomorrow. That's procrastinations. Okay, you know what? There's an element of laziness that's involved in procrastinations. And and, and putting off immediately immediate actions, you know, the things that we can do right now. Okay, we'll rather do it tomorrow. Right. Experience ba yun? Na kailangan natin gawin, pero bukas na lang kaya. Tapos dumating yung bukas. Ang problema sa bukas, hindi darating. Dumating yung kinabukasan, ay, bukas ulit. Kamang natin. So, yung bukas, yung tomorrow, that we can do right now, in tomorrow, hindi dumarating. Ah, do you experience that? Ay, yung problema sa procrastinations. Hindi darating yan. The devil will make it a point in your life that tomorrow that you decide to do things that God revealed into your heart, it will never come. The devil is working in you. Instead, the Holy Spirit working in us. Ay, bukas ako mag- bukas na lang ako mag-meditate kasi Bukas na lang mag-pray, bukas na lang magbabasa, dahil, you know, excuses. Name it. Alam natin puso natin, di ba? Bakit tayo hindi nagbabasa? Bukas na lang. Nung dumating bukas, naku, gabi na, naantok na ako. Wala. Lord, sorry. Bukas na lang ulit. Nung kinabukasan ulit, naku, may appointment ako. Bukas na lang ulit. You know? Kaya yung spiritual breakthrough natin never come into our life is because we keep procrastinating. And you know what? When God speaks to you, when you make yourself available to hear the word of God for your life, right? It demands immediate action, just like what we have in this account. And Jesus said, arise. Now, not tomorrow. Right? I want you to do it right now. And when he responded to that, what happened? Gumaling siya, di ba? Tama ba yan? Hello. Ano nangyari nung, tina- nung sumunod siya at ginawa niya? Healing take place, right? Kung ano yung, yung, yung dinidesire niya and God put that also in, his, in that desire in his heart. When he take immediate actions to the words that he heard from Jesus Christ, from the Lord, 
healing take place right away. Amen? It may, may, may not, in our lives, sometimes sa buhay po natin, it may not be immediate manifestations of, of, of what God has spoken and promised to us, right? But rest assured, when God speaks to you concerning your situations in life, when God speaks to you, the anointing, the ability is available. Deliverance is available. Provision is available, right? It doesn't mean that God did not answer your prayers. It's already available, right? It may not be the way we want it, right? But God will answer our prayer according to not we see things right, but according to what He plans for your life. Are we getting in church? But the point I'm trying to hear to say here is that when God speaks to you, that power, that promises is available to you right now. When you hear that message of hope. Are we getting in church? Okay? So, so when the Holy Spirit show up, okay, in your prayer time, and and God said, I, I want to meet you every day. In your prayer time and you're in the word. Okay? I just want to have fellowship with you because there's something I have for you that will bless you. I want to give it to you. Okay? And 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 we say, okay, and we say, okay, Lord, I'll do it. Then a week goes by. Two weeks goes by. And before you know it, Nothing being done. Are we getting it? Okay? Instead of doing it right now, we want to do it tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. The best of problems. The problem will never come. Right? And changes is not taking place in our life because of that procrastination. All right? Are we getting it? Okay, quickly. There are three reasons. So we are, we're good, right? When we say the enemy of our changed life is procrastination. When God speaks to you, you have to take immediate actions to that. All right, so, and, and uh, there are three things, okay, that, uh, you know, that uh, the reason why people procrastinate. Number one, quickly, indecisiveness. It means that, it means to have a difficult time making up one's mind, okay? We can't make our minds about what to do, all right? It's also true, your indecision is also a, can be applied to sa team collaborations. If you have work, you may have team kaya sa work natin, di ba? May collaboration style. And then, you know, in which we cannot reach a solution. Kaya kaya indecisive tayo. So indecisiveness is actually is actually common. Uh, we have uh, We have in our decisions, because it will result in unpleasant consequences. Ayaw natin ang pagbabago. Because it will bring what? Unpleasant consequences. Kaya indecisive tayo. Gagawin ko ba ito? Takot. Mawawala na ako ng oras. Right? Wala na akong oras manood. Wala na akong oras mag... I don't know. Name it. <laughs> Kaya ayaw natin. Alright? That's, that's the reason why we cannot make up our mind is because we think that God is the enemy of our time. That God will take our time and we lose our time doing things. Our personal things. Are we getting it? Kaya yung mga tao hindi nagpipray, hindi nagbabasa, hindi nagano because they cannot make up their mind. All right? So, you know what? There are several places in, in the scriptures that shows indecision. Na, na makita natin sa Bible. Like, for example, yung, yung life, wife ni Lot. Right? And her inability to decide between Sodom and being obedient to God. I know what happened. So, Genesis chapter 19, verse 26. Ang sabi doon, But Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Because of what? Indecisiveness. Example, si Joshua rin. 
So Joshua reminded the people of Israel, like the Israel, the necessity of choosing side concerning the worship. And you can see that in Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your, uh, uh, your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites, in whose lands you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Another one, see si Elijah. Dun sa Mount uh, Carmel, he confronted Ahab and, the young, and then the prophets of Baal. He, uh, si Elijah, he addressed yung mga, you address yung fence sitting in decisive uh, in decisive uh, Israelites. Nasa fence sila eh. Susunod ko pa to, hindi. Right? So ano sabi niya? Sa 1 Kings 1821, uh, chapter 18 verse 21, it says, Elijah went before the people and said, How long will you be waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow Him. If, the, if Baal is God, follow Him. Ano ba importante sa atin, church? Parang hirap na hirap tayo lumakad sa ating Panginoon. We are, you know, we, we are the body in our opinion. And, and God said, you know, if, if you see the Lord is God in your life, ano ba? Simple lang. Ang simple lang ang decision eh. Isang din, hindi tayo maka-decide eh. Lord, mag-pray ba ako? Gagawin ko ba ito? Atin ba ako? Or what? Or, kasi, you know, hindi ko alam. Isa lang, sabi ni Joshua. Sabi ni Lord, if the Lord is your God, ano sabi? Follow Him. Alam mo na pinapagawa sa'yo ng Panginoon yun, then gawin mo. If the Lord is your God. If not, di huwag mo gawin. Are you going to church? So, that's how we overcome yung mga indecisiveness natin. Kasi indecisiveness natin will lead to what? Become a reason of procrastination. So, simply lang. Okay? And the Bible says, and God, you know, I mean, God has given us words uh, to instruct us dun sa mga importante sa buhay po natin. Like po saan, sabi ni Lord sa Psalms 32 verse 8, ang sabi niya, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. And I will, be, I will guide you with my eye. Psalm 32 verse 8. If the Lord is your Lord, if the Lord is your God, and sabi ni Lord, I will instruct you. I will guide you. I will lead you the way you should go. If the Lord is your God. I'm getting it. So part, I'm just trying to help you to make a decision to follow Christ. Kasi minsan din natin, hindi natin alam, eh, nasa fence tayo, di ko alam, susunod ko pa si Lord, o ano, ano ba gagawin ko? Isang bagay lang. Si Lord ba yung God mo? O hindi? And then, make a decision. Simply lang, di ba? Okay. So, that, yun ang problema sa atin, di ba? So, and the Bible says in, in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6, you know, uh, Ang sabi ng Panginoon doon, no? sabi, uh, sabi ng Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6, sabi ni Lord, you know, for the Lord gives wisdom from His mouth come knowledge and understanding. So kung gusto natin maayos ang buhay po natin, yung, yung tama, ang tapat natin gawin, ang sabi ni Lord, you need wisdom. Right? Ano ba yung wisdom? Wisdom is applying the right principle so that you will get the right result. Pag wala kang wisdom, magulo ang buhay. Right? So, sabi ni Lord, paano kukuha ngayon ng wisdom? Sabi ng Panginoon, the wisdom what? Um, for the Lord gives wisdom. So, kanino ka lalapit? Say, the Lord, kasi gusto ko ng wisdom para maging maayos ang buhay ko. Sa mga decision na gagawin ko at ito ay maging tama, sabi ni Lord, He gives wisdom. He guide and lead us para po maging mabuti ang ating buhay. Are we getting it right? Okay? So, <clears throat> hallelujah. So, pero ang problema po sa atin, yung mga spiritual indecisiveness natin, you know, bakit naging indecisive tayo? It's because 
not because of the lack of knowledge. Because ay, pre, sa panahon natin ngayon, marami ng, you know, available na eh. Sa church, muta tayo, sa mga Bible study natin, sa cell group natin, sa training, available yung knowledge eh. You know? Available. And we cannot say, Lord, hindi ko alam eh. Right? Alam nyo, hindi tama yung sagot na hindi ko alam. Alam natin. Pero ayaw lang natin gawin. Right? Yun ang problema eh. eh sa, sabi, sabi yung sabi ni Lord, ang problema is, hindi knowledge because, but it is motivated by, karamihan, it motivated by fear of man. Natatakot tayo, mas mahalaga kung ano sasabihin ng tao kaysa sa akin. Nakakahiya. Kasi pag ako nag-share, nakahiya ako. Kasi, baka sabihan nila na napakariloso mo naman. Yeah. Panati ka masyado. Yeah. Diba? So, may natatakot tayo ngayon. We rather be a pleaser of men than rather than pleasing of God. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 1, verse 10, the Bible says, obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. And, and, and pleasing people were my goal. I will not be Christ's servant. Okay? So, kung unahin natin kung mas malaga ang opinion ng ibang tao sa atin, we cannot serve God. Kung ang ating go sa buhay natin is to please men, di huwag kang mag-share. Huwag mong gawin sinasabi ni Lord. Di ba? Ganun lang naman yun eh. Okay? But the Bible says, we rather be a pleaser of God. Not a pleaser of men. Okay? So number two, perfectionism. Alright? Number two, ano ba yung perfectionism? Ibig sabihin is often we will do, we will not do anything until we think we can do everything. Okay? So, wala ko, hindi ko gagawin hanggat hindi ko alam na ano na, na I am in control. Okay? So, if I can do it with perfections, I will not bother with it and procrastinations is the result. Alam niyo ano sinabi doon sa Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 14? Ito yung mga tao na perfectionist. You know? Ang sinasabi po nila, I can do, if I can do it the way I want it, then I won't do it. Right? And let's read on, on, on uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 14. Okay? I'll be reading an Amplified Classic Edition. Mas maganda to eh. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 4. Amplified classic editions. Yan ang version na gagamitin po natin. As I put on, He who observes the wind and waits for all conditions to be favorable will not sow. He who regards or, or look at the clouds will not reap. So alam po nyo, yung, yung, yung procrastination, sabi niya, I, he, he, you know, I will serve the wind and I will do things pag yung conditions ay favorable na sa akin. Pag perfect na sa akin. That I can do, you know, or I am in control. Doon pa lang ako gagawa. Doon ko pa lang gagawin. Okay? And you know what? Yung procrastinating, in his sowing, which now actually affect his harvest. Hindi siya magsusok hanggang iyo. At sa alam naman natin, di ba? Pag nagsok ka, you will reap a harvest, right? That's a principle. A spirit of principle, anything that you sow, you will definitely reap a harvest. Ang problema dito, dahil sa procrastination natin, gusto natin maging perfect muna, bago natin gawin yung sinasabi ni Lord. Okay? Ano nangyari? yung procrastination natin will actually affect yung sowing natin and pag wala tayong sowing, you are not, you are should not expect a harvest. Are we getting it, church? So, ibig sabihin, yung mga bagay na dinideserve po natin sa buhay natin, naapektuhan kasi hindi tayo makapagso. Bakit tayo hindi makapagso ng good seed sa buhay natin? It's because 
we are waiting for a perfect time. You know what? An imperfect time is when God speaks to you. Yun ang perfect time. Hindi yung anong tingin mo. Ako ba natin yung church? Kasi yun ang problema natin sa church. Naghihintay. Gusto natin sigurista. Kasi natin kasi sigurista tayo. Gusto natin sigurado lahat. You know? Eh, hindi yung faith. Pag sigurado ka na, eh, hindi, yung, hindi mag-ooperate ang faith natin. Church. Ang faith is things, ay something what? Na hindi mo nakikita, pero nagtitiwala kay Lord kasi sinabi ni Lord, that's faith. Pero yung mga bagay na ikaw sigurado, kayang-kaya ko ito, Lord. You know? And what happened, we try to be on our self-effort. You remember, just like this layman, yung previous experience niya, he tried to go to the, uh, the Bethesda pool in his own effort, right? And then pagdating niya doon, he failed. Why? Because he is operating on his own self-effort. The best thing in your life para ta- for us to have a spiritual breakthrough in our life, you need the word from God. Amen. Are we getting it? Alright, so so <clears throat> and number three, last na, sandali nila lang po, ano? So, meron tayong indecisiveness you have perfectionisms. Okay? Bakit tayo, that's the reason bakit tayo procrastinate The third one is laziness. Anong laziness? What's laziness? Is I don't want to put forth the effort to change. Ayaw ko. Right? I, 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 I know I need to change, but I just don't want to do it. Okay? I don't want to put uh, forth the effort to change. Ayoko. That's it. Period. Ayoko ang gawin. Nakakarelate ba tayo? <laughs> May mga bagay that God has spoken to us even in the past. And God knows our situation in our life. And the desire of God for us is to live a life to the full. Right? That's not God's desire for you. It's not necessarily mean that you have to have a, a, a million in your bank. It's not that. Yung satisfactions and being at peace, even wala tayong pera, ay eh malaking bagay yun. Ano po? Church. Okay? So, yeah. So, it, that's what God wants to us to have in life. Okay? Uh, people in their heart, they know, you know, alam nila that, you know, they should be doing this. They have, you know, uh, maybe they have a good intentions, but they just keep putting it off. Okay? I know, like, you know, um, um, you know that you, you don't do things uh, by good intention. You know, yung good intention, minsan, hindi nag-resulta ng mag- magandang bagay sa buhay natin. Just having a good intentions, hindi ibig sabihin na magkakuntahan ng changes sa buhay natin. So I mean, I say, I say, I'm day, I, I mean, one day, I'm going to get in shape. Okay? You, you need, you need one day na I'm going to stop eating this food. Yeah, may good intention. Eh. Kailangan ko mag-exercise. Eh. You know, pero anong problema? Ha? Huh? Hindi natin ginagawa. We, you know, Hindi natin ginagawa. Good intentions, right? Your good intention, if you don't go going to do it, ay wala. Bali, wala. You're just only procrastinating. You're just only putting things off in your life. You know? Are you getting it, church? You know? And tawag po doon, laziness. Ah, laziness yun. Kala ko nasa gym, pero natabad ako. Bukas na lang. All right? Oh, kailangan ko na mag-change ng diet. Uh, ay, masarap itong luto ni Brother Raul. Hindi ko mapigil. Ay, kakano. Right? Bumakas na lang ulit. Next week na lang. Mas maganda next week. Ano? I hope we can, you know. I'm just saying example, but when it comes to a spiritual life, misan ganun tayo. Tamad tayo. Whether we like it or not, whether we accept it or not, 
when it when it comes to the things of God, we have this tendency. We have a good intentions, right? To do what God has spoken to us, but yung good intention natin is not enough until you do it. Okay? So, so, ang mangyari is that we keep finding more excuses instead of trying to find a way to do what needs to be done. Yun ang ginagawa po natin. We keep finding excuses. You know, it, it's actually insane to think you can keep doing the same thing, keep procrastinating, keeping it next day and next day, and you expect a different result. You know, alam po niya, church, you don't have rights to expect different result if you keep doing the same thing. You keep procrastinating, don't expect something. Right? In the first, wala ka namang ginawa eh. And then, expect ka ng, ng iba? Na magandang resulta? Eh, wala ka namang ginagawa. Kailan ba yung sinunod mo si Lord? Kailan mo, kailan yung, ilan, kailan nyo? Ay, bar, di ko matandaan. Uh, last year yata. Ginawa ko yung sinasabi ni Lord. Tawa pa natin? Okay? So, okay, magagalit sa akin. Huh? We're just, just, just trying to, you know, na, na, na makita natin yung sarili natin. Kasi minsan, hindi na natin nakikita yung sarili natin. We become just a religious people. No? Na yung ginagawa po natin, wala nang meaning. We're just going through the motions sa gawin natin, akala natin, nakakalood kay Lord, pero yung heart natin, wala na doon. Kapag pa natin? Maraming ganun. Maraming sa church na ganun. Okay? So, sabi nga natin, change is not change until you change it. Kapag pa natin? Change is not change because you pray about change. Change is not change because you look up the definition ng change. Okay? And, and you wrote it, it's a paper about change. Hindi nangyari yung change na ganun. It's not change until change. So likewise, we have a good intention. Okay? Ang concern po doon is that there's no profit in intentions, in good intentions. Until you do what you need to do. Like sinasabi ko, di ba, in comparison, change not change until you change. Hindi ibig sabihin na sinabi mong change, nagsalita ka, plano ka mong change, magbago na. Ganun din yung intention. You have a good intention, pag hindi mo siya ginagawa, hindi maganda. Ang good intention, maganda lang yan pag ginawa mo. Kuha pa natin. Okay? So, so, it's actually, it start everything with one simple act. One simple decision. That when God says, okay, something in your life, okay, dapat nandun tayo sa tamang lugar, ano? Kasi God will always speak to us. You have to make yourself available. Okay? To receive the word of God for your life. Just like po yung layman natin. Hindi siya magkakaroon. He will not have a spiritual breakthrough. He's healing until Jesus spoken to him. When Jesus said, Arise. Take up your, your bed and walk. Kasi available na yun. Pag nagsalita, when God speak that, yung ability to be healed is available. Amen? Ako mo pa natin. So yun po yung dapat hinahanap natin sa araw-araw. Hindi lang tayo nagbabasa ng Biblia. For knowledge. Marami ka ng knowledge eh. Naimpacho nga tayo eh sa knowledge. Church, it's about time to put actions to it. One simple word. And, 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 and pag sinabi ng Panginoon, and when, when God said, the Holy Spirit is leading you and guiding you, what we need to do, I need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit speaks to me, I'll rather believe it and do and do it. Okay? Alam po niyo, a real breakthrough 
is when you hear from God. Ang breakthrough po natin doesn't come necessarily from the Word of God. Tama ba yun? Breakthrough doesn't come necessarily from the Word of God. Nagbabasa ka nga, pero wala kang manintindihan. It comes from a Word from God. Nakuha ba natin difference? Hello? Breakthrough doesn't come from the Word of God. It comes from a Word from God. When the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit taking time uh, to direct you, the Holy Spirit taking time to speak to you, to correct you, to rebuke you. Okay, alam po nyo, that's a huge part. Part of what? Of something that getting ready to break loose in your life. That's why we need a word from God. Are you getting in church? So wag po tayong going to the habit just reading your word. Oh, kasi yung leader ko, yung leader ko, ano eh, uh, kailangan magbasa daw ako. So magbabasa ako ng isang chapter, dalawang chapter, check. Right? Alam po natin, yung breakthrough it comes from a word that God speak into your heart. That's where your spiritual breakthrough comes from. Hindi dun sa nakapagbasa ka ng two chapter, three chapters, okay ka na. Feeling good na tayo. Pag sinara mo yung Bible, isipin natin, anong nabasa ko? Ano, ano, yung, ano yung naalala ko? Wala nang ako maalala. Eh. Tatong chapter, three chapter, pero wala maalala. See what? Is it what I'm trying to say? So don't just go through the motion of just reading it, but see to it that you will hear a word from God. Because that is what you are waiting for. A word from the Lord. When God speaks to you, the anointing, the ability, the power is available to you. If you put an action and if you put an immediate actions to that words God has spoken to you. Are we getting a church? Mm -hmm. Right, because when God speaks to you, I'm telling you, tuturuan tayo ni Lord, i-correct niya tayo. Right? Yung lahat ng pagtatama ng Panginoon sa buhay natin is just only a way of God getting ready, things ready in our life to break loose. Okay? That is, there's something um, powerful going on, going to happen. Right? Ready ba tayo dun sa breakthrough na hinihintay natin? So, alam tanayin nyo, procrastinations will help you in the failure. It will anchor you to the things that na hindi maganda sa buhay po natin. So you need to decide to make up your mind to do the things that you need to do. Okay? I believe I believe the Holy Spirit lives in you. Is the Holy Spirit living in us? He wants to guide us, he wants to speak to us, he wants to instruct us, he wants to to give us warning sa mga bagay na dating sa buhay po natin. All right? But he wants you to take immediate actions when he speak to you okay so then I when God speak to you you should not take it casually or putting it off when he speak to you you must be give him give it a priority in your life put in a sticky note put it in your life why because it's a major piece of whatever God's trying to do in your life Open it then. Okay? So that's the major piece of your safety, your provisions in your life. Amen? So, let's rise up. Take up your bed and walk. 
Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much, oh God, for your grace upon us. And it's our prayer, oh Lord God, now for the words that you have spoken to us, oh Lord God, we pray that you will continue to minister to us, oh Lord God. In sa mga bagay na hindi po namin naintindihan, let the Holy Spirit minister to us, oh Lord God, to open up our mind, our heart, Lord God, as we review and study your message sa amin sa araw po na ito, Panginoon. God, we pray, oh Lord God, na ang tanging nais namin, Panginoon, ay maganap ang iyong kalooban sa buhay po ng bawat sa po sa amin, Panginoon. Hindi po yung aming desire, personal desire, because ang aming personal desire will always fail, oh Lord. But when you speak up, when you show up, Lord, when you speak your words of life sa buhay po namin, marahan pong bagay na manggaganap sa buhay namin. Maayos ang mga bagay na hindi tama sa buhay po namin when you speak the words, O oh God. Lord, be unto us, O oh God, according to your word.